are Disney. So many of my favourite childhood films. Toy Story, The Lion King, The Aristocats. Oh, how you've grown. I guess it was inevitable I'd run into a film under the Disney umbrella whilst doing this series. If I'm looking for a quality computer game films, I should really have looked into the House of Mouse's back catalogue earlier, I suppose. And in 2010, they brought out a film based on the Sands of Time storyline from the Prince of Persia games. So why not give it a little look-see? The Prince of Persia series has been pretty up and down in my opinion, starting out as a hard-as-nails, trap-dodging skyscroller in the 1980s, one 3D iteration on the PC, which, from the demo I remember playing, controlled pretty clunkily, whilst being equally unforgiving. I overlooked the Sands of Time trilogy when it came out initially, assuming it wasn't for me, but various critics extolling its virtues did get me to play and love the series later in the PS2's life cycle. The characters were pretty relatable, the time-reversing mechanic interacted brilliantly with the free-running to make an in-challenging but not overly punishing experience, and the story fit perfectly with the Arabian Nights aesthetic the game was going for. There was also a PS3-era game with a more fantasy setting that I really enjoyed, even if the characters were shallower and including the time-reversing mechanic didn't make any sense in terms of story. Since then, the niche that these games filled has been swallowed up by the Assassin's Creed series. It was around here that Jerry Bruckheimer picked up the license to make a film based on the first game in the Sands of Times trilogy, presumably to replace the, at the time, flagging Pirates of the Caribbean series. And the results we have in this film is a big, old meh. First, to cover the elephant in the room that dogged production of this film, just to get it out of the way. Jake Gyllenhaal as the Persian prince was really unconvincing casting choice. I mean, I'm not of the opinion that everyone should be from exactly where their character is supposed to be, but... The fact that almost everyone in the film refers to him not by his character's name, but just by saying Persian, causes me to think, oh, yeah, he's supposed to be Persian. It's just not a good thing for suspension of disbelief. The story of the film is very loosely based on the game of the same name. The prince and his brothers invade a sacred city, which is home to a dagger that allows one to reverse time by a minute, and the titular Sands of Time, that theoretically could let someone reverse as much time as they want, but might also end the world? The film doesn't really explain the sands all that well, which is a shame because the effect used to show off the dagger reversing time has obviously been shown a lot of time and care, and is absolutely beautiful. Such a shame it's not shown off more in the film, really. The drama comes from Gyllenhaal's prince being framed for the murder of the king and fleeing with the guardian princess of the invaded city and the mystical dagger. Most of the film is spent with Gyllenhaal trying to clear his name. That's it. Pretty much all the story we're given to fill two hours of film which would be fine if those two hours weren't largely filled with exposition. Meandering and annoying characters, Gyllenhaal's forgettable prince, and the spoilt, annoying, whiny princess. Most everyone else only gets a couple of lines of dialogue, except Ben Kingsley as the king's brother, who does quite well but still comes across as a pretty broad and scheming stereotype. And this is what breaks my heart most about this film, as for once, narratively, the games did this better. The prince in the game starts out as an arrogant but likeable and goes to a recognisable character arc throughout the game, even continues to grow in the rest of the trilogy. Whilst his female counterpart in the first game is capable and intelligent, if a bit dismissive, and goes for an equally engaging arc. Maybe it's just me, but I can't see how an audience is supposed to connect with or root for the film's prince and princess. If the film distanced itself from the source material, with only a few nods to it the same way Doom did, then... Who knows, I may be being kinder to it, but every so often they will try really hard to connect back to the games, like repeatedly referring to Gyllenhaal's prince as anything but his actual character name, and I would just be reminded of how much better things were done back then, and no amount of random ostriches, decent parkour, or downright suspenseful throwing knife fights can save it.